Hello, my amazing artists. Today, we're going to start step two of our Generani inspired winter landscapes. Remember the other day we used all of our pen and ink techniques when drawing, like our cross hatching and our dots to add texture. And today we're gonna to be adding that element of color with a new medium. We're going to be learning how to paint adding our markers. So first, let's recall the difference between our warm and our cool colors. Remember, our warm colors are on one side of the color wheel, and they're colors like our reds, oranges, and yellows. Our cool colors are our colors on the opposite end of the color wheel. There are colors like our purple, our blue, and our green. Recall that today you're going to select either warm or cool to use as you paint your sky. Let's get started. So my first step today is to get out my markers from my supply kit and I'm going to make the choice whether I want to use warm or cool in the sky. I'm then going to get out all the markers that I think I could use for warm or cool. Let's see, Miss Epic has decided to create a warm sky today. So I'm gonna go through my colors. This is a color I can use. Yellow is a color that's warm. Can I use purple though? Nope, I'm going to put it back in my bag. I'll continue to do this until I've selected it three, at least three warm colors that I can use in my artwork. There may be more than three in your bag, but that's okay if you do not use them all. I'm going to set my bag to the side, and then I'm going to make sure that I have my paintbrush and my water cup nearby. If you're a friend at home, just use a cup from your kitchen with your family's permission and the paintbrush that's in your supply kit. The first step is to take one of your warm colors and outline your mountains. I think I'm going to start with the red first. So I'm gonna open it up, snap that cap on the back, and just create a broad, that means thick, line around the edge of those mountains. But I'm being really careful not to color in my mountains. To create a thick line, I recommend you using the side of your marker instead of the tip. I'm going to keep working down and then very carefully work my way back up. Work my way down and then very carefully work my way back up. I really want to avoid getting that marker on the mountains because remember we are going to leave them white. We want them to be nice and snowy just like the land is in Antarctica. And back down until I meet the corner. And that is the trickiest line you're going to make today friends. After that put your marker away and go ahead and select your next warm color. I recommend when you're switching warm colors that you choose colors that are analogous. Analogous colors are colors that are neighbors on the color wheel that sit right next to each other because if you're doing some blending later in your artwork, those analogous colors, like your yellow and orange, will look really neat when paired side by side. All right, I'm gonna open up my next color. I'm going to go about an inch up. I can measure an inch by using the side of my finger to know how far up to go. And then I'm gonna follow that first line with the broad side of this marker. And remember that this line can be a little bit more free flowing. You don't have to be quite as careful because you're not working on the edge of the mountains. I'm gonna put it up and choose my next color. Check about an inch up, all right. And I'm gonna follow that same line that I've been making that follows the shape of my mountains. Go down, go back up and close it. And then I'm gonna select my last color today. Down, back up. Down, back up, 
down and back up around my moon. And there we have it. I'm gonna put all of my markers back in the bag of my supply kit. And then I am ready for my paint. So the reason we're able to paint with marker today is we use Crayola markers, which are washable. Any washable marker, when activated with water, can act like paint. Today you have a round brush in your supply kit because round brushes are the best tool for working with watercolors. And that is the effect that these water-based markers will have. So first, wet your paintbrush. And remember that when we're painting with our paintbrush, we always want to give Patty a good hair day, so we're starting with that tickle. I'm gonna tickle around my red to activate the marker. And you're gonna notice that it starts to bleed out up to our next color. You see how I'm continuing to tickle really gently and notice already when it's touching that pink, it's starting to bleed the pink into my red some. I'm gonna keep on tickling. And if you ever notice that it's not bleeding anymore, that means your marker's too dry, you need to go and activate it with more water. And be really careful when working on the edge of those mountains again, not to paint down into the mountains themselves. Friends, I also want to remind you that as you're painting with your marker, and now that your paper is wet, you should never ever go back and add that marker to your paper again, because if you add your marker directly to this wet surface, it will mess up your markers. So only add that water after your markers are put away. Now I'm gonna jump up to above my pink color and blend it into my orange. See what happens here. Continue to use that tickle. And notice that I'm not painting below my pink line now because I don't want that orange to mix all the way with my red. Keep going down, work my way back up and then really carefully on the edge I'm going to tickle here. There we go. Clean off your brush, activate with more water, and now we're gonna blend orange into yellow. And then yellow all the way up to the top of the sky. And remember, I'm not going back into that orange and pink or else it will make my colors muddy and not as bright. We don't want to over blend those colors that we chose. And there we have our watercolor mixed media sky. I'm going to allow this to dry on the drying rack and then tomorrow I'm going to add in my final pen and ink technique with marker.